God and Son of Man Just preach Jesus until Jesus comes again Well, just preach Jesus born and crucified and risen from the dead Just preach Jesus as He paid for sin with the precious blood He shed Lord and Savior, King of Kings, Son of God and Son of Man Just preach Jesus until Jesus comes again Just preach Jesus until Jesus comes again Comes again
who oppose our Christian faith. They attempt to destroy everything that's holy and control what preachers say. But God still has a few good men who will bend, won't bow, won't burn. We will fight to the end to defend that faith until the day that the whole world burns. There are things we won't give over. Fighting for the book and the blood and the rugged cross, one faith, one way, one Lord. When the world and the flesh and the devil press on and try to tear our strongholds down, we will stand. still means everything it says it is now and forever the same the world may think that they have won this fight but there are some who can still be found who will never give in and will never give up we will stand our Tinsley, Miss Miss Wendy, are you here in here? In here? I need you up at the piano if you are. Miss Wendy Tinsley.
day that I live, he gives more than I need. I could never describe his goodness to me. You ask how I make it day after day. There's only one thing I can say. It's been a long journey, but I have been blessed. Walking with Jesus, I have no regrets. He is so good to me, I must confess. The way it's been long, but I'm blessed. All that I need, I find at his feet. When I'm hungry, he feeds me with manna so sweet. When my soul is weary, he gives peace and rest. All I can say is I'm blessed. Now I've had my share of sunshine and rain. Days filled with laughter, nights filled with pain. But with every mile as I travel this way, Turning it sweeter each day. It's been a long journey, but I have been blessed. Walking with Jesus, I have no regrets. He's so good to me, I must confess. The way it's been long, but I'm blessed. I'm different today if you just came in for a Sunday morning service we're finishing up our youth rally We've got a lot of visitors still with us and we're still fired up and excited about it so if somebody sat in your seat you go ahead and repent right now for what you thought and if you said anything go ahead and repent on the altar amen so uh, let's go ahead and make sure there's no hindrances to the spirit in here today all right and right before we pray also I want to mention a prayer request brother Ed Strickland a good friend of ours his group is still here his mama woke up today and uh, is losing blood terribly and is going to have to have some blood. They don't know exactly what's going on and he's really tore up about it and he's got physical problems himself. He's had a heart attack and everything else. So we want you to pray for his mom and pray for Brother Ed while we're praying right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the great, great weekend that we've had. Thank you for the good spirit that's still here in this place today. We praise you, Lord, as they just sung. That we might have had troubles and trials. We may have had our share of burdens. But Lord, in the, in the whole scheme of things, we've been blessed. And there's been more joy than sadness. And we praise you for that. And we thank you, Lord, for the souls that have been saved this weekend. We thank you that our soul has been saved. And Lord, for somebody here that's not saved, we'd like to see them get saved today. What a blessing that would be. Lord, thank you for the bus kids this morning singing. And I pray that you'd bless them right now. I'm sure there's a lot of them that are here today because of the carnival. Some that maybe have never been before. Brother Levi is going to be preaching to them in just a minute. And I pray that you'd fill him with the Spirit, God, that you would touch him. And Lord, maybe some more would be saved there in the bus ministry today. Lord, we do ask you to be with them. Keep them safe while they're playing after a while. Let them enjoy that. And Lord, we do ask you to be with this service. Help us not have anything in our hearts that might hinder the Holy Ghost. Help us to be right inside, right with one another, right with you. That we might feel the Spirit flow freely through the service and speak to us and help us today. Bless the singing of the choir, special singing. Lord, bless Brother Charlie as he'll preach in a little bit. Lord, we sure do love you. We do ask you to help Brother Ed and his mom. We pray that you touch her body and give the doctors wisdom today. How to help her and help Brother Ed not to get too worked up, not to hurt himself physically with his worry and stress. I pray that you'd bless him as he preaches today. It'll be hard for him to preach. He'll be preoccupied. We pray that you'd just bless him. And give them a good day. Be with all these folks that are traveling, Lord. Two groups that I know of uh, just headed out right after Sunday school. I pray that you'd keep them safe today. Bless all the churches that were at the youth rally that are back home today. 
I pray that their services would blow up with the Spirit of God. It would just overflow from the hearts of their young people and the adults that were here. And it would be a blessing to their preachers and their services there. We pray that you bless them. And we'll praise you for it all in Jesus' name. And all God's people see it. Amen. Grab your hymn book and stand if you would. What number, Brother Ken? Number 67. Everybody grab your book, turn to number 67. And we got a lot of folks visiting with us for the youth rally. I understand that. But if you're visiting with us locally, if you just came in for church today and you're wondering what in the world are all these people doing here and all these young people, you just came to church, we want to recognize you. We appreciate you being here today. So if you're visiting locally and maybe you've never visited before or you have but you didn't get one of our visitor packets, these guys want to give you the, one of those. So while we're singing here, and they're going down the aisle. Just slip your hand up. Let them give you that. You fill out the visitor card and give it back to us and keep the rest. And we're thankful that you're here. Let's all sing. Page 67.
seated. Thank you for being here this morning. Let me give our church a couple of prayer requests. We're trying to move along through the preliminaries here as the Lord leads, of course. But uh, let us just real quickly give you some prayer requests for our church and some announcements. Uh, pray for Mr. B. He had to be taken to the hospital this week, and now he's in Sunrise doing some rehab. So pray the Lord will strengthen him physically, that he'd be able to go home. And also, Miss Mace was in the hospital this week, and they could not figure out. I haven't heard since I visited her. Once we got into youth rally mode, I hadn't had a chance to check back in on her if they had figured it out yet or not. But as of when I visited, uh, she was still a mystery to them, losing blood and having to take blood. They couldn't figure out why or where. So continue to pray for Miss Mace. And then most of you know that Miss Tina Morgan's daddy passed away this week, and we'll be having the uh, memorial service tomorrow night, a Monday at 5 o'clock. I'll give you more of the details tonight, but be praying for Miss Tina and her family. And then uh, let's see here. Also want you to pray for Miss Kim. She was just up here singing. Most of our church knows Kim Blake's been dealing with cancer and had a bunch of treatments out in Texas and now has been back for a few weeks. She said she goes this week to Duke for some further testing just to make sure that it all looks good like it did when she left out there. So be praying about that, that the Lord would uh, help Miss Kim continue to get a good report. And Miss Clara is still battling hers. She's still uh, having to take some treatments for the cancer. They did the surgery and that went well, but they want to do some uh, chemo just to be uh, careful with it. And so pray for Miss Clara. All right, listen, Brother Ken, he'll give you a few more. All right, uh, let's go ahead and have our ushers come forward and while they're coming. Um, because of the uh, festival out here and the blow up games for the bus kids, the back exit will be closed. So for today only, you, when you exit, you can go up the hill towards the old building if you want to go out that way or out the front. Uh, just keep that in mind. The back exit by the school is closed. Um, there's a youth choir trip this Thursday, 4.30. On a Thursday, leaving at 4.30. A little bit odd for that day of the week and time, so keep that in mind. And then um, we have a, uh, a Bible and a youth rally t-shirt and a kid's backpack that was left uh, over at Ridgecrest. It belongs to Elizabeth Macy, and the Bible was given to her by Donna Macy 
If you're here to see me, we'll get that back to you. If you know them, uh, help us to get that back to them. And the last thing is, we've got Clark family. Brother uh, Charlie going to be preaching here in a minute. they got CDs. They will be for sale right out over on this side uh, after the service. Let's go ahead and pray. Brother Wayne, would you pray for us? Oh, hold on, hold on. give you one more prayer request while these guys are slowly taking off. Miss Dina Caldwell, is she here this morning, brother? I can't see her. She has had to be in the hospital this week having terrible chest pains, and they did rule out that it's not cardiac. They ruled out a lot of things that it could be that are really bad, but they did not figure out where the pain was coming from yet. Is that correct, Brother Thomas? So we want to keep... All right, so got an appointment on Wednesday. Keep praying for Miss Dina. The Lord would help her. She's pretty tough, so if she's hurting bad enough not to function, it's pretty bad. Y'all pray for her. Go ahead and play, sister. Thank you, sister. 
get you some of that. I need shiny to head jerk right now. Praise God. We did that for Brother Charlie because he's fancy. Amen. I told him, though, I, I said, I, I never quite know when she's done. I keep jumping up, and she, she hits a few more notes there. But praise the Lord for Miss Amy being here with us. All right, y'all come on and get ready and sing. And as soon as they sing, Brother Charlie's going to come preach for us this morning. And uh, let me help uh, Uncle Tom. Where are you at, buddy? Why don't you stand up there, Brother Tom? Yes, amen. We appreciate Brother Tom. He, he drove this whole crowd down here from New Jersey. Y'all give him a hand. Drove all night. Isn't that right? Didn't he drive all night? Drove all night to get him here. He's been here a couple years, at least two years, maybe three years. Two years. It seems like three. I don't know. Maybe you just wear on people. I'm not sure. But uh, no, Brother Tom needs me to help him a little bit. He's 26 years old and very single. <laughs> and um, see, see, y'all thought that I was just doing that to be mean, like I do sometimes. But no, this one's serious. He is all, he is all for me helping him find a good wife, good Christian. Let's see what he say. Smoking hot, good Christian, smoking hot. That's what he said, I think. <laughs> so, 20, we got a range, we got an age range, like, obviously legal. We're not going to prison, praise God. So from legal to 20 older than you, you all right with that? He don't care, praise God. So I'm thinking legal to 40-ish maybe, who knows? If you think you still look 20, then you got a shot. He's got an application. He'll take some photos and compare them. And uh, we'll be emailing back and forth. And, and uh, amen. If this works good, I get the dowry. It doesn't matter. I get paid. Amen, Brother Tom. Now, y'all think we're kidding, but the man wants a wife. If you want a husband, line up after church. Somewhere over in here. Is that about right? Now, are you going to testify to his... You didn't get any help over here. He, but he's a Christian boy. Loves the Lord. Christian and crazy. Well, man, I'm Christian and crazy. Maybe that's why we like each other. All three of me really like you. There's three of me in here. We talk together all the time. And uh, that's a blessing. But now I ask him. I mean, we're at the end of youth rally. We're all fired up. And he's talking to me because he really thought Brother Charlie was going to help him. And he failed him. Because there was more visitors there last night. I mean, he could have helped you. And he... He laid him down. But uh, I said, well, all right, I'll help you. I said, now, you, you know, you love God, right? He goes, nah. I said, eh, hey, we just had youth rally. He didn't understand the question. He really does love God, ladies, and some of you don't care. So, But he does, all right? He's a bus captain? Oh, amen. See, ladies, he's tender-hearted. <laughs> Tender, hey, tender-hearted. He's giving his number out. We're going to put it on the big screen in just a minute. <laughs> Man, I wish I had. I got it. I should have put it on the big screen. Tenderhearted and listen, humble. I mean, if you're looking for him. And he has a Oh, a new Mustang. Now, that's the truth. Look here, son. Your face wasn't doing nothing but the Mustang now. Amen. The, it is a sweet Mustang. I saw it on Twitter, praise God. Convertible. Brand new, and you can drive, or close, new to you, you can drive it? I can drive it some, yeah. So a lady that can drive good, that's smoking hot, and loves God, eh. Any volunteers? You want to just go ahead and raise your hand, right? Oh, we got hands going up, brother. Hey, we, okay, that's that prison thing. That's out. <laughs> brother. All right, that's enough of that. I think we probably ought to pray. Y'all ready to sing? They're married. They're married. Don't worry about that. A lot of these are married. No married ones either, okay, buddy? If they come up and they got a ring, you send them right away, you bunch of wicked, wicked debauchery. <laughs> Let's pray. Good Lord. Y'all are, are wicked. Let's pray. Father, help us now as we try and get serious again. Be with them as they sing. Be with Brother Charlie. We love him. Appreciate his family. Pray that you'd bless us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing it now. All people that on earth do dwell Sing to the Lord with cheerful voice Him serve with 
with fear his praise forth tell. Come ye before him and rejoice. Oh, enter then his gates with joy. Within his courts his praise proclaim. Let thankful songs your tongues employ. Oh, bless and magnify his name. Because the Lord our God is good, his mercy is forever sure. His truth at all times firmly stood and shall from age to age endure. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Please turn in the Word of God to Psalm chapter 57. Psalm chapter 57. Thank you for that song. That was beautiful. It's good to be in church this morning. Amen. Good to be in church this morning. Amen. Absolutely. If you missed the youth rally, you really missed something. So I want to just thank everyone that helped pray and everyone that gave to help pay for uh, the youth rally. It's just been a tremendous time these past days. I am thankful, and I mean this with all of my heart. I'm thankful, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here and to have my family here. This is our 11th year in a row. I can't believe that. Time's flying. Brother Tony's getting old. And uh, we are just having a great time again this year. Thank you for the opportunity. I never take it for granted. And uh, I'm glad to be here. It's good to see the church full. Appreciate you being faithful. Thank you for the groups that have stayed, your group leaders. New Manna, you've done a great job with the meeting. Tremendous job. And uh, I know God's going to give you a great day. If you were here to listen to the young people from the bus ministry, they were a great blessing. Appreciate the group from Philadelphia. I got some Yankee friends here. And uh, if you were to ever get a chance to go there, to where they're from, I hope that you go and visit. And uh, Brother Burton's doing a great job. Brother Paul, the whole crew, and I know this ministry supports them in finances and also in prayer. It's been good to be with Brother Haglin. Sister Haglin, good to see you. Appreciate uh, Grace Baptist and Brother Jenkins and all that's going on up there in Gaylord, Michigan. They are way up in the middle of nowhere, and when I say nowhere, I mean it's nowhere. And uh, so I'm glad that they've come. Appreciate that. And it is good to be here in church this morning. Now, some of you kind of have that youth rally Baptist hangover look on your face, kind of like, whoa, where are we and what has happened? And uh, But most of you look pretty good, and uh, if you're visiting this morning, I'm glad that you've come. Please make yourself at home. This is a friendly church. Amen. At least most folks here are friendly, right? And uh, I mean that. They're a friendly church. It's a good church, Bible-believing church. In a world gone crazy, we need to stick with the Bible. Got verses, right? That was tremendous. And you young people, I hope you'll hold to that message. We've got a, a lot of young people, sadly too many, that are growing up in church and then getting to be 19 and 20 and around that age and starting to question what it is that you really believe. Hey, listen, get anchored into the Word of God. Make sure the Bible is your focal point in life. Stay in tune. Psalm chapter 57. Again, it's good to see you groups. Uh, and, and, and it's good to see youth leaders and pastors that are here year in and year out staying faithful. We are thankful for your faithfulness. 
And I hope that all of you young people appreciate your group leaders. And again, one more time, thank you to New Manor. You've done a great job with it. And we're going to dive here into the Word of God. I'm not going to preach real long. I'm going to just kind of keep it moving. But I want to preach something this morning that I believe that it would help you if you listen. Now that's the key statement, if you listen. Turn to the person next to you and say, you need to listen to the preacher. <laughs> Tell them again. Say, now wake up and listen. If anybody goes to sleep, you just jab them with a pen or a pen or do something to keep them awake. No sleeping in church this morning. Balcony folk, I'm watching you up there, right? I'm only teasing. Some of you are probably stuck up in the balcony because no room on the main floor. Psalm chapter 57, in the word of God, let's pray. I'm going to dive in, give you the message, and then get out of the way, and you can go get your Sunday afternoon nap. Can I get a witness right there, right? Amen. Woo, if you don't take a Sunday afternoon nap, you're not right with God. If you, don't, if you don't get anything else from the message, make sure you get that, right? Sunday afternoon nap. I'm from New Jersey. Could, yeah. God help us. Brother, that is the promised land. How many of you have never been to New Jersey? Look at that. How many of you don't care if you ever go to New Jersey? That's what I thought, right? Your idea, it's the armpit of America. That's terrible, but it's not. It's wonderful there. It's, it's, it's the closest thing to heaven. But anyway, no, it's a good place. You ever get a chance, come see us, all right? It's a good thing. Reverend Dr. Tony Shirley is going to be preaching our tent meeting in a couple of weeks. Right? We're bringing the hillbilly to the north. <laughs> Reverend hillbilly. Glory. And uh, we have an interpreter when he preaches that explains what he's saying. And uh, we have our Spanish ministry. We have our redneck ministry. And uh, we're just trying to help our people. But anyway, it's a good time. And your brother Scott Matthews is going to be there with the Rochesters. Now there's somebody who needs an interpreter. Well, Scott, when he preaches, I don't, he's, he's from the hills. I'm telling you, he makes you look like a New Yorker or something. But anyway, we'll have a good time and uh, breaking ground. They're coming too. So we're, we're just bringing all the pickers and the, and the singers, singers and the preachers, right? We'll cut Brother Tony loose so you pray for that meeting. If you hear it announced uh, that he's gone, pray for that. And I appreciate how God's using your pastor in a lot of places to be a great blessing. And, uh, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit more tonight. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the verses in this book that mean so much to us. God, you filled our cups this week. And I pray you do it again right now. Lord, I pray that you'd move, that you'd stir, that you'd help. And I pray that from it all you'd get the glory, the honor, and the praise. Father, I pray for my brother finishing up the message at home. Get ready to go into the invitation. I pray, dear God, that you'd fill him with the Holy Spirit. I pray you'd save souls. I pray you'd bless the ministry at Grace. Bless all the ministries represented here. God, I pray for groups that'll be on the road that you give them safety. Father, I pray for the youth rally spirit to overflow in all the churches that attend it, God. I pray we get good reports later today about what you've done in those churches. Thank you for this church, the impact it's having in this area and around the country, around the world. And I pray, God, you'd help us now as we look at your word. We pray in Jesus' precious and holy and wonderful name. And all God's people said, Amen. Psalm 57, here's the story. Stay with me. David has been anointed king. But he has not yet ascended to the throne. Because King Saul is still the king. And King Saul is chasing after David. King Saul is chasing David all through the Judean wilderness. And David is wanting to honor King Saul. He could have killed King Saul at the cave near En Gedi. He cut a piece of the robe off, but he didn't take Saul's life. Even though he could have, he would not touch God's anointed. So literally, King David, when writing this psalm by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he's in the cave. He's on the run from King Saul. And when we come to Psalm 57, this is not King David who is on the throne later in life. This is King David 
who although having been anointed by Samuel and although supposedly was going to be the king, he's not yet there. And in fact, it doesn't look good for David right now when we come to Psalm 57 because Saul has set the armies of Israel against him and they're looking for him and Saul's goal is to kill him. So we see David here is in a rough place. If you've ever been to the Judean wilderness, if you've ever seen pictures of it, it's rugged terrain. It's a rough place. It's not the place that you would want to be. David was in a desperate, desperate situation when we come to Psalm 57. Notice, be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Now I want you to notice how David prays for mercy. Aren't you glad for God's mercy in your life this morning? He didn't pray for justice. He prayed for mercy. And notice how David made a wise choice. Notice your Bible. Keep it open now. He said, my soul trusteth in thee. May I remind you this morning that when you're in trouble, when you're in a desperate situation, you need to put your trust in God. He said, in the shadow of thy wings, like a hen that covers its chicks from the enemies, from the weather, David was saying, I was going to hide myself in God. In God, I'm going to make my refuge, notice this statement, until these calamities be overpassed. Calamities. You think, what's a calamity? Well, when it comes to weather, we think of a hurricane. When, when it comes to weather, we think of a tornado. When it comes to weather, we think of some terrible storm. That's what a calamity is. And in life, at times, watch me, church, we have calamities. In life, sometimes it's a physical calamity. And you're going through it. It was made mention of the dear lady who has cancer. And that's a calamity physically. And it may be occurring in your life right now. Sometimes we have calamities in our mind, mental calamities. You say, what do you mean by that? I'm talking about where the devil is attacking our thought life. I'm talking about when we feel oppressed in our mind. Sometimes we have calamities emotionally. Boy, you can come to church and everybody else is shouting it out, but on the inside you feel flat as a pancake. And you don't normally put a sign around your neck that says, I'm discouraged or I'm depressed, but sometimes you come to the church house and that's where you're at. Discouragement is a loss of heart. Depression is a loss of hope. And there's times when you come to church and you feel like emotionally, I'm having calamities. Sometimes it's socially. In your marriage, there's a struggle. And we, again, we don't always advertise that. But sometimes that's going on. Sometimes one of your children have become a prodigal. And you're going through a social, a relational calamity in your life. Sometimes it's a financial calamity. Maybe you've lost your job. I spoke to someone yesterday, and they told me about someone, a pastor who has pioneered a church. He's got a six-figure job in the secular world, and he just lost his job. And he's got that financial calamity. Somebody here, your work has slowed, and maybe you're losing your home, and you go through that financial calamity. Sometimes it's a spiritual calamity. I'm talking about where the heavens seem as brass and you go to the scriptures and you don't feel like you're being fed from God's word as in other times. And listen now, I'm telling you, there's times when you're going to be in the storm. There's times when you're going to be experiencing trouble. Young people here, I know some of you, and again, young people a lot of times keep this inside. But there's young people here, and in your life right now, you're not wanting to go back home because of the calamities that are occurring at home. And at some point, listen church, I don't care who you are, although you may be on the mountaintop experience right now, Right now, there are seasons of calamities in all of our life. 
And right now in this story, Psalm 57, David is in the cave. David is on the run. David is hiding from Saul. And David, no doubt, would have had some confusion in his mind. But I want you to notice verse 2. Notice what David said. With determination, I will cry unto God most high. You know, there's times when our prayer life moves from just something quiet and it becomes a cry. He said, I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. Notice verse 3, he shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Selah, God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. I want you to notice that. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongues a sharp sword. These were real enemies. And notice verse 5. David said, Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me. Into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves, Selah. David's going through it. David's in the cave. David's being oppressed. But I want you to notice verse 7. David says, My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. And notice the determination. David says, I will sing and give praise. My situation may not be what I want it to be, but my heart is going to be what it should be. Amen. David was determined. Verse 8, awake up my glory. Awake psaltery and harp. You remember David was a harp player. And David was in the cave, but he said this, I'm not going to let the devil steal my joy. I'm not going to let the devil take away my song. He said, I'm going to go to my harp. I'm going to go to my strength, my strong instrument, and I'm going to play before God. I myself will awake early. David says, I'm going to stir myself. I'm not going to let my praise, I'm not going to let my worship be slumbering, be sleeping. He said, I'm determined that although I'm having a tough time in the cave, I'm not going to lose my joy. He said, I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations, for thy mercy is great under the heavens and thy truth under the clouds. Notice verse 11, the same as verse 5. Church, read it together out loud. Ready? Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. David wanted God to be worshipped. David wanted God to be praised. And I want you to notice David's spirit. I want you to notice David's idea of God, David's description of God. Pick it up with me in verse 2 if you would, please. I will cry unto God most high. And then notice how David describes God. Unto God that performeth. If it's your habit to mark or underline in your Bible, would you mark those three words? God that performeth. I'm preaching this morning about God that performeth. Amen. You say, what does the word performeth mean? It means this. It means to perfect. It means to get the job done. It means to finish it means to bring to an end. Watch me, church. It means to complete. And here's what David is saying. David is saying, although I'm in the cave, and although I've not yet ascended to the throne, I remember that God sent Samuel, and I remember that Samuel anointed me, and although I'm not yet where Samuel said I'm going to be, although I'm not yet where God told me I'm going to be, I believe that my God that performeth is able to get the job done in my life. The God that performeth is able to perfect my situation. The God that performeth is able to give me the victory that he's promised. You need, and I need, 
to have great faith in our God that the God who has started these things in our life is able to finish them. Our God is able to do whatever it is that it's His will for your life. Amen. There's too many people that are starting well, but they're not finishing in the Christian life. And you and I need to be people that have great faith in our God. Great faith in our God. Let me ask you a question this morning. Stay with me, and I'm not going to preach long. I need your attention. Let me ask you a question. What do you need personally the God that performeth to do for you? I mean, if I could bring this mic to you and say, go ahead and whatever it is that you speak out today, God is going to perform it in your life. God's going to bring it to pass. God's going to give you the victory in that area. What do you need God to do for you? What do you need God to do for your family? What does God need to do for this church family for us to fully accomplish God's will? May I suggest this morning that the same God that was able to take David from the cave and take him later to the throne is the same God we serve this morning and whatever you need and whatever your family needs and whatever your church needs, our God is able. He is able to get the job done. Now in our own strength, we can't accomplish anything. But I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Do you need God to perform something for you in an area where there's a problem? I'm talking about in one of those calamity areas. Do you need God to step into your situation and help you and help your family or help your church family? Listen, where there is a problem... You have to remind yourself there is also a God. And God can perform things in the midst of your problems that you never thought possible. Where there's a problem, God can rise and help us. And listen, where there's a possibility, God can come to our aid. God can give us strength. God can do a great work. I'm talking about in your life. I'm talking about in your family. I'm talking about here at the church and in the ministry you're part of. God can do things and in our lives where there's possibilities. He can do greater things than we ever thought possible. You say why? Because he's the God that performeth. He's the God that gives the victory. He's the God that gives the strength. He's the God that gets the job done. He's our God that performeth. Look at Philippians chapter 1 quickly. Sword drill style. You know what that means. They throw candy at the kids when whoever gets there first. Now I don't have candy, but I'll preach shorter if you turn faster. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. Notice quickly. Philippians chapter 1, the apostle Paul loved these dear saints here at Philippi. And he speaks to them in verse 3, he said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy. Notice how Paul believed in this group of people. You know, it's good when a bus captain believes in one of the young people that rides on their bus. It's good when a Sunday school teacher believes in the students in their class. It's good when parents believe in the prospects, the possibility of their own children. It's good when a church has a youth rally because they believe in the power of teenagers. And Paul believed in this group here. And notice what he said in verse 6. Being confident. Being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you. Are y'all with me? Watch this. He's begun a good work. He has started something in our lives. It started with the day we got saved. How many of you glad you're saved this morning? You glad? How many of you remember the day when you got saved? He began a good work in us. And Paul said that, notice, being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you, statement, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Here's what Paul's saying. God saved you, but he's not finished with you just because you got saved. What he started in your life, you're on this journey of being a Christ follower, a Christian, living out God's will for God's glory. 
Paul said, I am confident that what God started in you, He's going to perform it. He's going to finish it. He's going to complete it. He's going to give you the victory. So here's what I'm saying, church member. It's not time for you to quit on God. God's not done with you. You say, but I've been away from God. And in my heart, people don't even know it, but I'm cold today. Hey, listen, I'm confident. He started when He saved you. He's going to keep working in your life. God's not going to quit on you. Make sure you don't quit on God. We need to believe that the God who started a great work in our lives will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He's able to do that. He's able to give you victory over the calamities. And whether it's problems you're dealing with or the prospects and potential you have, God is trying to work in your life God is trying to work in your family. God is wanting to work in this church family. God is able. He's the God that performeth. Hey, watch me on this. God can perform miracles. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe God is still able to do a miracle for you? Do you believe God is still able to do a miracle for your family? Do you believe God is still able to do a miracle for this church and the other churches represented? I believe God. I think too many people act as if God's dead. Hey, God's not dead. God's not sick. God doesn't even have a headache. Our God is fine. And he's looking for some men and women of God and teenagers that will believe that he is able. Look quickly, if you would, at Luke chapter 1. A miracle in the word of God, Luke chapter 1. Can you imagine Mary? And the angel comes and says, you're going to be with child. She was not Mary. She was a virgin. And God said, you are going to be with child. You're going to birth my son into the world. I'm sure it must have stunned her. Verse 35, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. It must have been stunning for her to hear that. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. Verse 37, together out loud if you're there. Ready? For with God nothing shall be impossible. Keep reading if you would. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. So we have the two cousins here. They're both with child and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. Notice it wasn't a fetus. It was the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now watch me on this. You have Mary and Elizabeth talking and Elizabeth has the babe, John the Baptist, leap in her womb and she spake out, verse 42, with a loud voice. As far as we know, it's just the two of them and all of a sudden, Elizabeth starts yelling at Mary. Come on, now we don't like church loud. Y'all don't have that problem around here. We like it loud. Notice she was filled with the Spirit when she spake out with a loud voice and said, in a feminine voice, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Elizabeth got excited, and she was filled with the Holy Ghost. And whence is this to me? Verse 44, For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy, and blessed is she that believed. Notice, Mary believed. Notice, for there shall be a what? There shall be a what? Performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. We see the promise in verse 37, for with God nothing shall be impossible. And we see here in verse 45, it stated, there shall be a performance. And turn your page if you're like my Bible, chapter 2 and verse 7, we see the performance, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Hear me, church, in the Old Testament it was prophesied. A virgin would conceive. God who promised in the Old Testament 
God who sent the angel to Mary was able to perform and did perform Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only man ever born of a virgin. You say, what was that? That was a miracle. You said, who accomplished that miracle? The God that performeth. And I'm saying this morning, in your life, and in your family, and in this church, and the other churches represent it, it's the same God we pray to this morning. It's the same God who's able this morning. And if God could do the miracle of the virgin birth, hey, He can help you with your finances. And He can help you with your family. And He can help you with your walk with God. And He can help you with whatever ails you this morning. God that performeth is still able. Look quickly at Romans chapter 4, the last one. Romans chapter 4. Abraham. Abraham was recognized in the Word of God as a great man of faith. And in verses 13 through 21, it's describing Abraham. Verse 18, and being uh, who against hope believed in hope. Verse 19, and being not weak in faith. Verse 20, strong in faith. Notice the description of Abraham. Strong in faith, giving glory to God. Giving glory to God. I want you to notice about him that he was somebody that believed in God. Verse 21, and being fully persuaded that what he, God, had promised, he was able also to what? Talk to me, church. He was able also to do what? To perform. How many of you believe Isaac was born? Uh, you believe that? You believe your body? I mean, that really happened. Now, that was seemingly an impossibility. Abraham and Sarah were old. You couldn't have that child at that point. But watch me. God stepped in. God did the miracle. God performed what was seemingly impossible. You say, why? Because Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. Remember what Elizabeth said about Mary. Mary believed God. Hey, David was in the cave. Young people, stay with me. I'm almost through. David was in the cave. Samuel had said, David, you're going to be the next king. The oil had come down on his head. But he was now in the cave. He was now running from Saul. He was now having the armies of Israel trying to take his life. But watch me. David, with determination, said, I still believe, I still believe it is the God that performeth that will bring me to the throne. And we know the story. David became the greatest king in Israel's history. God got the job done. God finished what he started. God perfected that event. Saul thought he could stop it, but God was bigger than Saul. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10 is my father's life first. Can we look at it quickly in closing? Malachi chapter 3. It's my dad's life first and I love it. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10. Here's what the Bible says. Stay with me. Read it together out loud. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Notice those three words, prove me now. You know what God's saying there? Test me now. Try me now. Go ahead, just see if I'm still real, if I'm still living, if I'm still able. Hey, I love to study church history. But may I remind you, young people, right now we are making some type church history. And the God that performeth is still able. And the God that performeth is still working. And the God that performeth, he's wanting to do in you what only God can do. But you've got to believe him. That means all that you decided here at the youth rally, 
All that you started at an altar, He's able to perform when you get home. All the things that you decided to do in reading your Bible, He's able to perform it in your life. All the things that God would ever put into the heart of anybody here who's walking in the Spirit and following God's Word, God is able to perform. Don't doubt God when you're in the cave. Believe God that the calamities will be overpassed and He will complete and perform in you great and mighty things for His honor, for His glory. Father, I pray You'd help me to believe what I preach and not just make noise. God, I pray You'd help everyone in this room. Lord, that we'd be great and strong believers in Your Word. Father, I pray that Your Word would resonate in the hearts of every single person here. God, I pray some young people would believe you. I pray some older folk would believe you. God, I pray for our family's sakes and for our church's sakes and for our ministry's sake, for our country, God, I pray that we'd have great faith in you. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I preached quickly this morning as fast as I could. I hope it didn't just overwhelm your ears with noise. I pray the Spirit of God moved in your heart. I wonder how many people this morning could say, Preacher, I know if I were to die that I would go straight to heaven. I don't have any doubt about it. And it's for a Bible reason. There was a day when someone showed me I was a sinner and that I deserved hell. And I didn't want to go to hell. And I put my faith in Jesus Christ. I was saved. I was born again. I'm not trusting what I can do. I'm trusting in what Christ did for me on the cross. And I don't have any doubt I'm going to heaven. If that's you, would you raise your hand this morning? All around the room, and you may put them down. Thank you. Not every hand could go up, and I appreciate your honesty. I won't come to you. I won't embarrass you. But I'll pray for you. Is there anyone here this morning and you'd say this, I don't know for sure if I were to die that I would go straight to heaven. I'm concerned about my soul and I would like prayer. If that's you, you don't know for sure you're going to heaven and you would like prayer this morning, I'd pray for you and we give you an opportunity to trust Christ. Is there anyone in the auditorium, main floor, in the balcony, you'd say that's me.